here is a snapshot of where we are. We have introduced the concept of positive definite matrices and positive definite functions. These play important roles in constructing the Lyapunov candidate, which has the potential to be an energy-like function that can tell us the stability of the entire state space for this linear system. And we did the derivative. We computed the derivative of the energy-like function, this Lyapunov candidate. And we introduced this new matrix Q, positive definite matrix Q. If Q is positive definite, then this function is a negative definite function. That means the energy will decrease. We'll keep decreasing until the energy reaches zero at the origin of the state space. And the way that these two are connected is by this Lyapunov equation. A transpose P plus PA equals negative Q. And this matrix equality equation, if you just take the derivative from here, take the derivative, apply chain rule to the Lyapunov candidate, then you can make a connection. You, can, you, will, you will be taking the derivative of x transpose once and x once, and then substituting in this system dynamics, you will be able to derive the Lyapunov equation. That's the connection. And Q, if Q is positive definite, then this is a Lyapunov equation. The Lyapunov function, and we can conclude the stability. And Q and P, they are connected by this Lyapunov equation. They are also connected by an extra equality, which is derived based on this very simple fact. If you integrate the derivative of V dot, if you integrate the derivative of V, then you can evaluate it from two passes. The first pass is just by looking at the derivative, just looking at the, at the integration, this equality is the same as v at the infinity time minus v at the initial time, which is substituting from the left-hand side is x transpose p infinity p x infinity minus x transpose 0 p x 0. And if the system is stable, then the state will go to 0 if it's asymptotically stable. Then on the left, you have the entire thing to be the first term vanishes, you are left with something about P and the initial condition. And on the right hand side, you have, by substituting in the formula for X, so from the system dynamics, you know that X can be expressed as also something about the initial condition. So on the right hand side, you can express this one Also, we're at with something that's very similar to the structure on the left-hand side. And then you have this middle part to have a close connection to P over here. So here, more specifically, we have this result. That actually gives us a solution to P. If you give me a Q and the system is asymptotically stable, then one solution of P is precisely this. So this is if system 
is asymptotically stable. The condition is very important. So if it is asymptotic stable, then P has this structure. This is very good for analysis. First, it tells us if Q is positive definite, then look at this. It's integration of Q in the middle, and then left and right hand side, it's something that has a symmetric pattern. So if Q is positive definite, then this thing in the middle is actually positive definite. And if we integrate something that's positive definite for all T, the result is also positive definite. So that tells us actually a way of the solution concept. If Q is positive definite and A, the system is asymptotically stable, then we are guaranteed to have a P that's positive definite. So that's the solution concept. Another thing that uh, is very useful is, th this is good for analysis. We don't usually do this infinite integration to solve for P. Instead, we actually substitute numerical values in here. For example, so this is for analysis. For computation, we actually, if let's say A is Let's say A is negative 1, negative 1, 1, 0. Then this is no, this is no. So the way we solve is, if you give me a Q, so let's say Q is identity, then we solve P using this Lyapunov equation. We have, so P is 2 by 2. And P is symmetric. So there are only three variables inside. P is symmetric means the off-diagonal elements are the same. So you can just write it this way. So that's one way to numerically solve this. This is a matrix equality, meaning that on the left, you have a two by two matrix after all these computations. And every entry on the left has to equal to the corresponding entries on the right-hand side. So you will have four equations out of this matrix equality.